In my videos so far about the Southwest Technical 6800 computer, all of my disk demonstrations have been done using this controller you see here on the left. This is a third party controller made by a company called Percom. And this was the first controller available for the Southwest Technical 6800 computer. It's a hard sector controller like most of the first disk controllers were because it's much simpler to implement than a soft sector controller. In the day, implementing soft sector controllers with TTL took about 100 chips and a board probably four times this size to get it done. But that all changed in late 1976 when a company called Western Digital introduced their 1771 chip. This disk controller chip they provided allowed you to implement a soft sector controller with just their chip and a few other um, buffers and interface to your bus to make it very simple to have a soft sector controller. If you look here on the right, this small board is actually a full soft sector controller. And here's the 1771 chip right there in the middle. Uh, this is um, actually Southwest Technical's own board. This is their first disc controller, the DC-1. Came out just a few months after this Percom controller. Now don't let this big IC fool you. That's not a 1771, that's just a, um, not a UART, but technically a U-SART. I guess there's no A in that either. It's a serial, um, parallel to serial converter for synchronous data. And that was used to serialize the data going out and in from the disk. Um, but yeah, this is a, a hard sector controller. Now obviously the 1771 allowed uh, Southwest to make this board very small. It's small enough that it fits in the IO bus in the back with just 30 pins as opposed to here where it's 50 pins and goes in the main bus. Uh, the main reason Percom did that is because if you recall, their operating system ran from EEPROM, like you see here, and uh, you could only have EEPROM on the main bus. You could not put that over on the IO bus. Also, they needed the space to, uh, to build a controller. There wasn't enough room on the little card. But other than that, there is really not a lot of functional difference between the two. At that time, they both supported the, at that point, new SA400 drives from Shugart, giving you about 88K of storage. Uh, the speeds and everything would have been about the same. Now, I have done all the disk demonstrations using this Percom controller in the past because until now, I didn't have access to one of Southwest's own disk controllers. I have this here for just a few weeks as I uh, restore it for another hobbyist. So for the sake of completeness, I thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and uh, make a video using this controller to boot and run their operating system, which is Flex, and we've demonstrated that in the past. So I'm going to do a brief video cut and we'll come back and we'll take a look at running um, Flex with this board inside the Southwest Technical Computer. All right, I have the controller installed in the computer now. You can see it's back there. It's in slot six of the IO bus. If you recall from previous videos, each of the slots in the IO bus is pre-decoded so that the boards themselves don't have to do the address decoding. Each slot occupies four addresses in the uh, 6800 IO space for control registers. So that uh, board is expected to be in slot six by a couple of things. Number one is the boot prom swap bug has a boot command. It expects it to be in slot six because that determines its address. Likewise, the operating system itself, Flex, expects it to be in slot six. Now the board actually requires more than the four addresses provided by the slot. So the slot right next to it, slot five, can't be used when you're using this board because some of the addresses of slot five are used to do things on the board there in slot six. All right, now the operating system used with this board, as you saw in other videos, is called Flex. It was developed by Southwest, uh, excuse me, it was developed by technical system consultants at the request of, of, Southwest, of Southwest for their computer. However, technical systems consultants retained the rights to it. And they actually sold Flex for a variety of different machines, um, 6800 base, 6809 base, 68000 based, and it was essentially the CPM of the 6800 world, as we have shown in other videos. Very nice operating system, and that is what was used with this controller. All right, so um, a command to boot the disk with Southwest's own controller was built into Swapbug. It's the D command for disk. And if I just type the letter D, you'll see the disk come on. And it started the boot process, and you can see here we're into flex and it's asking for the date. Now we've dated this video and now the boot process will continue and pretty soon we'll see the boot prompt or the command prompt of flex, which is those three pluses. Now I can do a catalog to see what's on the disk. And there's the files. There's also a, a wide format that other people have written. Um, I call it cat W for cat wide. 
and you can see the files on the disk. Now at this point, there's absolutely no difference between all of my previous demos of Flex and then doing it again with this board. It's the same capacity disk, it's the same size sectors, it's the same number of sectors per track. Uh, the speeds would all be the same, you'd see absolutely no difference. So frankly, this is about it for the video, kind of an anticlimactic ending, but it was just to round out and show you Southwest's own disk controller and booting Flex with that just for the completeness and um, for the fun of it, so to speak. But that does it for this video. Until I get some other new hardware, maybe a 6809 system, I always love that processor. I don't have much else I don't think that's going to show up for the 6800. But uh, like I said, maybe we'll work on a 6809 in the future and have some new things to show you.